of news courtesy of Vogue. Big news, actually. Breaking news and news that's kind of shocked the entire fashion world, it seems like, from what I've been reading on the Twitter space. Daniel Lee has left Bottega Veneta. And if you're wondering who Daniel Lee is, Daniel Lee is basically the guy responsible for bringing Bottega, Bottega, Bottega Veneta back into the public consciousness um, with his Bottega green um, color codes, with his pouch, with those big lugger boots that everyone's kind of a fan of. You know, people from Skepta to Dua Lipa and whatnot are basically wearing that shit head to toe all the time. You know, very many influencers are posting pictures of themselves carrying massive green shopping bags when they leave the store. There seems to be a real prevalence of kind of, I would say, pandering to black people in fashion. It feels like even though Daniel Lee is, you know, whiter than white, maybe he's got a black boyfriend. I don't know where watch way swings don't come at me but it just seems a bit strange anyway in general the whole like you know but you know it, it worked for him because he got the cool points you know lined off the right people he went to detroit did a show over there got carl craig to score it and shit you know whatever i think that's mary j blige sitting in the front row in this picture as well isn't it that's mary j blige so yeah he did damn thing but anyway he's now leaving after only three years at Bottega Veneta. he's now leaving so this is the this is obviously the from the last collection he did over there at detroit people are people are basically saying maybe he spent too much money and they don't want to keep backing his kind of you know um crazy dreams but let's continue with the article it says Bottega Veneta and daniel lee have announced that they are parting ways lee showed his first collection for the right Italian railway show in fall 2019 um leo rongon ceo of Bottega Veneta, said in a statement i would like to thank daniel for his dedication he provided the Bottega with a fresh perspective and new sense of modernity while remaining respectful of the brand's 50-year heritage the remarkable growth of the brand over the last three years bears testimony to the success of his creative work Bottega Veneta's was Lee's first creative director assignment. He was plucked from Celine Studio, where he was women's wear director under Phoebe Philo, which of course you know, you know the vibes when it comes to Phoebe. Lee's first Roman collection received mixed reviews in part because his particular aesthetic was rough around the edges than the one he helped hone at Celine, but his accessories hit almost instantly. The butter leather pouch sparked a trend for softly constructed leather bags and his square toe pumps and sandals have similar agenda set in effect in the footwear and thereafter he has embraced the fashion why did they mention the lug boots so they mentioned the battery levels maybe because they're women's right they're not they're not men's but that's strange that they mentioned the pouch they mentioned um the square toed pumps that all the flipping um instagram hotties were wearing for a period the sandals but they don't mention anything about the fucking lug boots strange isn't it? or the tie whatever they're called anyway it continues Thereafter, he was embraced by the fashion establishment at the 2019 Fashion Awards held in London. In December of that year, Lee was nominated for the top four prizes and won them all. Rihanna and Hayley Bieber were both seen in his statement making fringe shirling outwear for that label. The pandemic slowed Lee's role, as it did with the entire fashion industry, with the traditional runway show in rotation system in question. Um, but yeah, he still did that show in fucking Bergheim during the lockdown. Innit? That was fucking, that was a mad thing. And remember, he flew people out to Germany to do a fucking private after party. What did he do there? That was a mad move, man. <laughs> oh, God. What a legend. London was his first and not long after show. Not long after that show, the brand deleted social media accounts. Um, a second salon in Berlin was showcased for the brand's experimental network silhouettes and flair of colour. But an after party attended by the unmarked and veterinary revelers attracted negative press. Last month, Lee and his team showed the spring lineup at label at the Michigan Theatre in Detroit. The collection was a pivot to a sportier, more casual sensibility. In the state same in the same statement, Lee said, My time at Benetta has Bottega Benetta has been an incredible experience. I'm grateful to have worked in an exceptional talented team and I'm forever thankful for everyone who's been part of creating our vision thank you for francois Henri Pinot, Pin Pinot, Pinot. how you pronounce that francois Henri. how you pronounce that is that you say francois Henri Pinot. is that how you pronounce his name i think so for his support and for the opportunity to part of particular about his story the release has said um the release said that a new direction career direction for the house will be announced very soon so we don't know what the new direction will be but we can kind of pontificate about why he might have left let's say this it's most likely, most likely when it comes to these sort of cases that he either left because some sort of, you know, misconduct, whatever, behind the scenes, which it probably would have leaked by now, maybe demanding more money or some sort of disagreement with the board, right? Those are probably the two, I think, options on the board. And then, of course, there's the fourth and final option, which might tell you that sometimes designers are clever and they try and get out at the top, right? right when they're at the peak of their powers so that they can kind of leverage all that 
kind of success that they've had at a previous label into another job because the last thing you want to do because you're only as good as your last collection and i personally thought that last collection in detroit was pretty shit right i thought they weren't that great so if that's the case and he knew the reception to that wasn't the best and that he wasn't maybe getting any better than that um maybe the right thing to do is to sort of you know basically say you're going to quit and in hope that you can kind of leverage that earlier sort of rub to get you a better job whenever you want that going forward. That might be the best way to kind of go about things. I think so, personally, if that was me. Um, I think that might be a great, great option to go, avenue to go down in that respect. But maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, but I do think if you look back at some of these earlier collections, right? Um, the first was this in it, 2019 runway that one there that's what that's the one i remember kind of finding out who you know daniel lee was and what he was kind of basically trying to present on the runway um and it kind of went back to switched it but if you look at the collections from the beginning to the end it kind of similar sort of trajectory it feels like to the demna at vetmar oh, no demna vetmar ended quite strong actually but let's say it didn't it, that, it started to get quite repetitive very quickly even though it was a short period of time because he still did a lot of collections man like this is again the, the other part of it too could be that fashion is fucking brutal right so from what i remember i think he started designing from here because obviously you see the aesthetic is basically similar so in three years right he did the see the collections this is how much you know fashion is a fucking torturous fucking business right from pre to from pre fall 2019 he did one two three four five oh my god why does it keep clicking and clicking you fucking piece of shit but it looks like he did more than 10 in three years 10 collections which is fucking nuts to think about that that way right but let's look at it properly um pre fall 2019 um so yeah it's like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven collections in three years which is what four collections a year or some shit like that that is fucking nuts right turning that around and in that period he managed to you know um completely change the reception or the kind of a law the appeal of Bottega Veneto he created some monumental pieces that are going to go down in people's fashion archives they're going to become instantly instantly collectible now especially since he's basically good so he's going to leave but it's absolutely crazy to think man 11 collections in three years it's fucking insane so maybe a part of him just thought you know what I'm done man I can't do this anymore um it's a lot of work um especially when it's not your own brand and you just basically a, a kind of a, a hired gun there's also a part of me that thinks maybe he tried to renegotiate his contract because obviously it's free. It's a three-year deal. Was it a three-year deal? Maybe it's a three-year deal. I think it's a three-year deal. I'm not too sure how long the original contract was, but he tried to maybe renegotiate and try to basically use his success of bringing the label where maybe now and try to leverage that into getting a higher salary. They obviously scoffed at that and said, "Now we don't need you because essentially what these brands do when they have somebody who's that successful, similar to what Saint Laurent did with um, Heidi Slimane, you can sometimes use the after the kind of momentum or whatever kind of steam that designer that creative director has kind of built during the time at your house to basically survive for another two to three years mm, two three maybe for another two season no no it's not too soon yeah for another two years let's say let's say another two years you can use that momentum and then in that moment in that time you hope someone can come along who could then kind of carry on your work or carry on that work or maybe lead it in another direction but you can still use that to kind of ensure that the sale numbers are not too drastically different to the ones prior that's what you could do so maybe in particular in this case they were like you know what even though your codes are very you know definitive and very much a daniel lee thing there is an option to find a designer who can possibly do what he did to some certain extent um without maybe having to pay them what he was basically re requiring them to pay him especially when he kept doing more lavish shows and flying them around in different places there's a pop-up shop that just opened recently in london which i'm wondering if that's going to end up getting closed i'm also wondering if they're going to limit the amount of black people that go on their fashion shows and have to get another creative director in who absolutely knows who knows but that first collection this first one was an absolute barnstormer mate if you remember this one 
that that was the first one I kind of remembered who he actually was. And um, again, the Rough Around the Ages thing is true. I think in just terms of a overall first collection, I think it started to get a little more tighter as it kind of went down, as it went over, as it kind of progressed or kind of evolved throughout the years. But I did think in terms of providing an an actual first introduction into the fashion sphere and announcing yourself, this was kind of you know they smashed it out of the park. Like, this look free is just fucking. You know, this is fucking top level, top tier shit. And already, you know what I mean? Already kind of telling you what he's going to be about. The boots, the patterns on the jackets, the little emblems, the little triangles and shit. Some really, really clever, clever pieces. Even just the, that, I think it's a ribbon on a sweater in it, right? Got this kind of gold chain link thing going on. Like All this stuff is going to become incredibly covetable, incredibly collectible now that he's decided to kind of go in a different direction right again just classic amazing stuff like that this is this is crazily good man look five here is it look five no look 10 sorry from four to 20 four 2019 collection really good and off the back of that i saw this kind of cool article courtesy of um fashionista um that was written in 2017 that says hey quick question what's with creative directors quitting after three years we basically analyzed a bunch of creative directors who left their posts after three years too so maybe that's the magic number um it's funny to see uh, as under wang running down the runway there all giggly and stuff we're never going to see that again are we after his accusations of spiking people's drink with ketamine and shit right allegedly that's what i've heard he's probably never going to see him jogging down the flipping runway like that ever ever again um but yeah they continue stefano palati stefano palati i think he's still doing what's his brand now is it randomness or random house what it was called but um yeah he's still doing his thing there raf is obviously raf and hedy semaine you know he's doing hedy semaine shit at celine so it says here quickly read this article it says in recent news sorry in recent fashion news the most surprising yet frequent announcement has been regarding creative directors stepping down from their top roles of fashion houses let's revisit them in chronological order shall we um raf simon leaves dior in october 2015 alexander wang leaves balenciaga in october 2015 the balenciaga of alexander wang balenciaga of them are completely different things isn't it mad to think man there was a time when people were really coveting that Alexander Wang Balenciaga um Stefano Paletti at uh, Meglu Zegnia um Bernard Mulan at Bur Burani him and Samantha leave Serena on uh, April 2016 um again they probably have never recovered from that period I don't think they've sustained their business don't think don't get me wrong but that's how do you say main Saint Laurent era man just the wire boots alone do you know what I mean the guy fucking smashed it the leather jackets the jeans the, the flannel shirts the t-shirts like come on man the belts like just phew, another level um alessandra Facin, facinietti leaves todd's in may 2016 daniel daniel sherman leaves air dune in may 2016 uh we tell people we don't really care about anyway it says very what these nine designers have in common is that they each served for just three years before exiting their respective brands, something that doesn't exactly seem coincidental. So we asked the numer numerologist Felicia Bender from Colorado to fill us in on this number. As it turns out, the number three has very pretty and interesting vibrations in numerological, in num numerologically speak, especially with reevaluating one's purpose in life. It's all about self-expression and emotional sensitivity says bender this <laughs> bender this number brings with it an amazing amount of creative energy joy and optimism she also notes there are free as a number of excellence so it's interesting to find these designers choosing to work with these brands for this length of time and then reassessing their decisions um you are being pulled into a change and really tapping into a highest creativity when people are experiencing experiencing this they're also more into moving forward rather than staying in place they have it the number the, the blah, 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 blah. anyway you get it right the point of the story is is that most likely this guy's got some hips in a minute the point of the story is that more likely than not in fashion if you're really successful and you do great work and you're selling a lot of clothes and you're making your fashion overlord guys in the suits a lot of money they're going to demand more of you. They're going to demand more of the same. They want to see you replicate that success, double it, triple it, quadruple it, right? That's what they want. They just want to see those numbers increase. They don't care about steady numbers or, you know, breaking even and shit. No, if you're successful one year, you got to double that the next year. So it's kind of a bit of a poison chalice, right? Um, essentially, right? You've kind of made a rod for your own back by the success that you basically do. And nowadays with fucking resort collections and all this sort of shit and pre-fall and all that sort of nonsense, most brands, if you're successful, 
the making a pre fall collection and whatnot is just an easy gimme because you've got the resources and the manufacturing to do so anyway. So why not try and make yourself some extra money on top of it? But then of course, like I said, Daniel Lee, from what I see, has been from his time at Bottega Veneta in that three year period had to design 11 collections right I don't know how many pre collections or original collections are in there but there's a lot in there so he was demanded to keep you know he made the greatest hits he made some hit items and then he went to make more hit items more colors more shapes more silhouettes boom 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 and i can imagine that could become a little bit more a little bit overwhelming so a lot of these people i'd assume probably felt some of that and thought you know what before i get pushed i'm gonna leave some of them probably just thought as well three years is a good time to kind of gauge or give you an idea kind of to build up a, maybe an archive or a real sort of library or real kind of portfolio of what you're about at that specific brand at a specific time in your life with those specific resources or codes or whatnot yeah that's going forward because you to obviously go there and also maybe when you sign in year one and they take a punt on you the brands are definitely going to be reluctant to sign you again until more years because they know how kind of um fleeting and fickle the fashion industry is just because you're hot now doesn't mean you're going to be hot later on there's always a possibility that daniel lee could fall out of favor and i did see a real change in the discourse around daniel lee um on social media myself with some of the people that i follow it within the last year or so so maybe he, the brand but take had you know monitored had kind of hired a flipping social media monitoring sort of team who basically came to the same conclusion as well like maybe daniel lee's kind of favor is dropping and all this i don't know many many things that go into it but regardless it's a real big blow i wonder if it's going to change anything when it comes to the brand will we see less black people on the runway um will they stop doing that fucking stupid online magazine thing that just is a magazine um the non-social media use would that be a thing going forward all these weird retail stores popping up pop-up shops retail pop-up shops popping up will that be a thing they stop doing will they change the bags i don't know loads of things i'm interested to see going forward but again daniel lee's out daniel lee's out at protega veneta tell your friends tell your enemies tell everybody